بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين بارئ الخلائق أجمعين باعث الأنبياء والمرسلين ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء وسيد المرسلين حبيب إله العالمين المصطفى أبي القاسم محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المنتجبين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد واللعنة الدائمة على أعدائهم أجمعين إلى قيام يوم الدين السلام عليك يا أمير المؤمنين السلام عليك يا سيد الوصين السلام عليك أيها المظلوم الشهيد رزقنا الله في الدنيا زيارتكم وشفاعتكم في الدنيا والآخرة أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه المجيد وقرآنه الحميد وقوله الحق أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألف لام را كتاب أنزلناه إليك لتخرج الناس من الظلمات إلى النور بإذن ربهم إلى صراط العزيز الحميد الله الذي له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض وويل للكافرين من عذاب شديد الذين يستحبون الحياة الدنيا على الآخرة ويصدون عن سبيل الله ويبغونها عوجا أولئك في ضلال بعيد صدق الله العلي العظيم إن شاء الله over the next few nights we will be discussing سورة إبراهيم على نبينا وآله وعليه السلام and inshallah we'll try to get through as much as we can over the next few nights inshallah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins this surah with the letters, the alphabets that we find in the Quran in some surahs in fact 29 surahs in the Quran begin with these letters alif, lam, meem Alif, Lam, Ra, like in this surah, Kaf, Haya, Ain, Saad, and so on and so forth. What do these letters mean? Mufassirin have given many interpretations. Some of them have given over 11 interpretations, sometimes even more, about what the meaning of these letters are. For the sake of time, we will discuss only a few of these meanings and some of those interpretations. Some suggest that these letters are secrets, hidden. What is referred to in the Quran as mutashabihat. Some verses in the Quran are mutashabih and some are muhkam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Ali Imran, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. He is the one who revealed the book. هو الذي أنزل عليك الكتاب منه آيات محكمات هن أم الكتاب. This is آية number seven of سورة آل عمران. وأخر متشابهات. So he is the one who revealed the book down to you. Of it are verses that are clear محكمات. For example, Allah says قل هو الله أحد. Clear خلاص قل هو الله أحد. Allah says ليس كمثله شيء. There is nothing. Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are clear verses. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ya ayuha al-ladhina amanu aqimu salat All those who pray establish salat. Clear verses. 
Some verses, however, are mutashabahat. Allah says, Hunna ummul kitab, these are the essence of the book, the verses that are clear. However, wa ukharu mutashabihat. Mutashabih are verses that may require interpretation, require ta'wil. So Allah says, فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ زَيْغٌ فَيَتَّبِعُونَ مَا تَشَابَهَ مِنْهُ People who are deviant, who have deviation in their hearts, they follow those verses that require deeper interpretation, ta'wil, so that they would misguide people. They would give all kinds of interpretation that misguide. For example, for example, among the verses that are, you know, require interpretation are verses that give personification to of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yani for example, Allah says the hand of Allah is on top of their hand. So does Allah really have a hand? Or for example, in Surah Taha, Allah says, Ar-Rahmanu ala al-Arsh istawa, the All-Beneficent sat on the throne. So does that mean Allah physically sits on the throne? A group of Muslims, the Asha'irites and the Salafi school, both say, yes, Allah has hand, he sits, but not like the way we do. Like he has a hand, but not like our hand. He sits, but not like the way we sit. In the Imami school of thought, we refuse, we reject this. We don't accept this kind of interpretation. Ahlul Bayt said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not physical, that he sits on a throne physically. These are allegorical. You know, in other words, they have metaphorical meanings. They are referred to something else, like the hand of Allah refers to the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sat on the throne is not physically sitting, rather it means he dominates subhanahu wa ta'ala because a king dominates. When once a person is a king, then he dominates. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has always been the one in the power. Tabarak al-ladhi biyadihi al-mulk and Allah has the power of the mulk and the malakut, the seen and the unseen. So Allah has power over everything and that's what these uh, ayat could refer to. So these verses that may have double meanings or they could, uh, they require deeper interpretation. Those are verses called mutashabah. So some fasirin of the Quran say this is among the mutashabah, these uh, alphabets. We don't know what their meaning is. That's one interpretation. Another interpretation suggests that they could be referring to the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every letter refers to an attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's not necessarily that the beginning of the letter begins with the attribute. For example, lam. The Lam could refer to the attribute of Allah, the Alim. The Lam of Alim is in the middle, but it's referenced into that. So the Alif could refer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Kaf Haya Ain Saad, for example, the Kaf could refer to Allah al Kafi, the one who suffices, he suffices people. Ha is Hadi, for example, Allah al Hadi, he guides, and so on and so forth. So every letter would refer to an attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's what these letters could refer to. That's another second meaning. A third meaning suggests that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is challenging people and this is attributed to a hadith from Imam al-Sajjad alayhi salam and Imam al-Rada salam Allahi alayhi. Both of them have a hadith where they suggest the essence of the hadith is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is challenging Quraysh. He, challenged, he challenges people across humanity, throughout humanity. That try to come up with a copy like the Quran if you can. Can you come up with a copy like the Quran? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is basically telling people that the Quran is made up of words. It's Kalam Allah. Allah created these words. And words are made up of what? Letters. So therefore, if you people doubt that this Quran is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, use these tools, use these alphabets and try to come up with a copy like the Quran, if you can. For example, just to draw an analogy here, if someone goes to a painter, and looks at a beautiful painting. He says like, oh, you know, I could have done this myself. You know, I look at this painting and they say, what's so special about this painting? I could have done a better job. 
So the painter could say, okay, if that's the case, no problem. Take the tools. Here is the brush. Here is the paint. This, these are the tools I use, I use to produce this painting. You use the same tools and try to come up with something better than this if you can. Okay. So just as an analogy, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is challenging humanity throughout history. Come up with a copy of the Quran if you can. It is narrated that at the time of Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam, there were people who were known as Zanadiqa, dualists. People who, in this day and age, they probably would be called atheists. So, they used to challenge the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They have many debates with Al-Imam al-Sadiq salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi. One day, four of them, and they were we the leaders of them, a man called Ibn Abi Al-Awja, second one, uh, Abu Shakir al-Disani, third is Abd al-Malik al-Basri, and the fourth is Abdullah ibn al-Muqaffa'. And those four were scholars of language. They were scholars. They were not like ignorant people, but unfortunately, they did not recognize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These four came one day to Masjid al-Haram, and they saw people doing tawaf around the Kaaba. They said, look at these people, you know, just going around these rocks. Ibn Abi Al-Awja said, listen guys, how about each one of us comes up with a quarter of a Quran? We are scholars. Let's come up with a quarter of the Quran and then we meet next year and we put our copies together and we come up with a Quran and we present it to these people. If we can nullify the Quran, we would nullify the prophethood of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam and this would just nullify the whole religion of Islam. So what do you guys think? They said, perfect idea. So they said, okay, let's come back next year at this time so that we can, inshallah, we can um, put our books together, our copies together. They went. After a year, they came back. So they turned to Ibn Abi Al-Awja, their leader. They asked him, Ibn Abi Al-Awja, what did you come up with? He said, you know, when I left you guys, I thought in order for me to come up with a copy like the Quran, I need to read the Quran so I can come up with something like it. So I picked up a book and I started reading the Quran. I came across to this ayah. In Surah Yusuf, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse number 80, فَلَمَّا اسْتَيْأَسُوا مِنْهُ خَلَصُوا نَجِيًّا When they gave up on him, and this is at the time when Yusuf alayhi salam took his brother Binyamin uh, with him, and they try to tell him that please don't take Binyamin, take one of us, you know, our father really wanted us to bring him back, and so on and so forth. He said, no, we'll take Binyamin. So after they gave up hope, from taking Binyamin, they had a private meeting. فَلَمَّا اسْتَيْأَسُوا مِنْهُ خَلَصُوا نَجِيًّا مُنَاجَاتْ نَجِيًّا يعني private talk. He says, this ayah or this portion of the ayah, in fact, it's not even a whole ayah. فَلَمَّا اسْتَيْأَسُوا مِنْهُ خَلَصُوا نَجِيًّا If you look at verse number 80, there are other lines as well in the verse. But this part of the ayah, when I looked at it, I just could not come up with anything near it in meaning, in brevity, in value. يعني it's such a brief statement, yet it carries such high eloquence, high value. So he says, you know what? I gave up. You know, when I came to this ayah, I gave up. That's Ibn Abi Al-Awja. So then they turned to Abdul Malik. What about you, Ya Abdul Malik? He said, well, same thing here. I also picked up a copy of the Quran. I thought, let me see if I can come up with something like it. I read until I came to this ayah in Surah Al-Hajj, verse number 73. Allah says, Ya ayyuha nasu dhuriba mathalun fastami'u lah inna alladhina tad'oona min dun illahi lan yakhluqu dhubaban wala wajtama'u lah wa in yaslubuhum al-dhubabu shay'an la yastanqiduhu min da'ufa al-talibu wal-batlub Oh those O oh people, Allah is giving an example to people. 
an example has been given so listen to it a parable has been given so listen to it people surely those that you claim as gods other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they would not be able to make a fly the small insect a fly even if they unite to do so and if the fly takes something away from them and for example if the fly uh, causes uh, takes their health away they won't be able to take it back from him both the one taking the fly is weak uh, and the one who wants to take the fly is weak and the, يعني, the human being is weak and the fly is weak subhanallah something that is weak also destroys something that is weak both of them are the human being is weak and these days during this COVID-19 pandemic truly it's a lesson for humanity subhanallah people thought they're they're invincible people thought science has all answers Khalas, we don't need anything anymore we can do whatever we want and Allah wanted to show humanity that he is the al-wahid al-qahar the omnipotent the all one who has control over everything a virus that cannot even be seen by the naked eye has crippled world's economies claimed the lives of hundreds of thousands of people has affected the lives of millions of people subhanallah these hundreds of thousands of people who have lost their lives due to COVID-19 if you talk to them four or five months ago they would have told you I have wedding plans I have um, you know travel plans I have plans to do this plans to do that and now subhanallah they're not even on this earth anymore inna lillahi wa inna lihi raja'un truly something to wake up for brothers and sisters let's not procrastinate and delay our tawbah our repentance and our iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala okay so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving an example in the fly that be aware and Allah is giving it to all people and this is important I will come back to this point Allah says ya ayyuhan nasu this is in surah al-hajj verse number 73 all people and I'll come back to this point inshallah just keep it in mind Abdul Malik says I came to this ayah I just could not come out come up with an ayah that is equal to it in terms of its eloquence in terms of its content in terms of its value so really I gave up hope I could not come up with something like the Quran all right that's Abdul Malik what about you Ya Abu Shakir al-Disani he said same thing I picked up the Quran I came across to Surah Al-Anbiya verse 22 Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Law kana fihima alihatun illa Allah lafasadata again this is part of an ayah not a full ayah ayah number 22 the first half of it if there were gods other than Allah then it would have been destroyed and there would have been chaos this is one of the proofs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Quran presents that there are no other gods there's only one al-wahid al-qahar if you had two gods for example hypothetically speaking or three gods hypothetically speaking one god would have said I want day the other one said I want night uh, one god would have said I want the seas uh, this way no he said I want earth that way I want people to live on Mars no no let's make it earth. and there would have been chaos in this universe there would have been chaos in this universe the uniformity of the creation suggests that the creator is one the creator is one just as an analogy just to give you an analogy brothers and sisters when people pick up a novel that is written by one author they can tell that this novel is uniform people of expertise those who are experts in literature and read the novel they say that this whole novel is written by this one author this whole play is written by this one author when there is a change slight change in the tone experts pick it up they can tell this is now something has changed and there are plays in history historical plays I don't have time to get into them where scholars of English language suspected that the whole play may not have been written by one author and using textual analysis they proved it they, they suggested they realized they came to a conclusion pretty good evidence that the this portion of the play was written by Shakespeare because 
80 or plus percent of its content is similar to Shakespearean language. The rest was written by another author. So you see how subhanallah, when you have uniformity, people can tell. In the creation, you see this beautiful cohesion, this beautiful uniformity, how the, the animal kingdom depends on one another, for example, how the world depends on one another. We exhale, for example, CO2, plants and vegetations, if we use the word inhale, you know, they breathe CO2 and they exhale oxygen that we inhale as human beings, for example. SubhanAllah, look at this beautiful creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's just one example. There are millions of examples that we don't even think about, don't even realize. Allah says, look at the skies. Do you see any faults in the skies? Look at the signs. Look at yourself. Look at yourself. See all these signs that inside you. All this came in by coincidence. SubhanAllah. Yani really, if people were to reflect, they would realize there is definitely a creator. Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al wahid al qahar. So he says, I came to this ayah, if there were more than gods, if there were in it gods, then it would have caused corruption. It would have been corruption, chaos. I could not come up with a verse like this. It's such a beautiful statement, so short yet so eloquent, so great. Okay, that's Abu Shakir al-Disani. Then what about you, Ya Abdullah ibn al-Muqaffa? He says, same thing. I also picked up the Quran. I came to Surah Hud. Verse number 44, this is the time when after the flooding finished of Prophet Nuh alayhi salam, Allah says, وَقِيلَ يَا أَرْضُ بْلَعِي مَاءَكِي And it was said, O earth, swallow thy water. وَيَا سَمَاءُ أَقْلِعِي And O skies, stop. The skies were to stop. وَغِيضَ الْمَاءُ وَقُضِيَ الْأَمْ So the water then, you know, dissipated. وَقُضِيَ الْأَمْ The matter was finished. The ship was so high, the water was so high that it covered mountains. And so when the water receded, the ship of Nuh was on a mountain called Judi. Judi. Some say it is in the city of Najaf. You know, these are some traditions. Nonetheless, uh, interestingly, um, scientists today discover that there are sedimentation, there is sedimentation on mountains. And so they speculate that the earth was covered with water because this sedimentation is caused by water. You know, when minerals deposit, for example, minerals and water deposit on mountains. The flooding of uh, Nuh alayhi salam, according to some traditions, suggests that it lasted for 600 years. So it may be possible, Allahu alam, God knows best, that because of these 600 years of uh, the mountains and everything being covered by water, then that could sedimentation that could have happened then and Allah knows best inshallah. Okay, anyways, وَاسْتَوَتْ عَلَى الْجُودِي وَقِيلَ بُعْدًا لِلْقَوْمِ الظَّالِمِينَ It was said that far away for the oppressors. He said, when I came to this verse, again, I could not come up with anything like it, a match to it in eloquence, in, in the vocabulary, in the, in the style, you know, the, the, how the words are put together. It's amazing, amazing in terms of eloquence and the scholars of language recognize this that's why brothers and sisters just to let you know something i personally have not seen a single scholar of arabic literature arabic language who claims that the quran is not the book of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's not a divinely revealed book i have not seen people who doubt the quran most of them if not all of them are not scholars People who just pick up the Quran and read and they start to come up with, you know, excuses and things like this. But scholars don't, you know. Ibn Abil Kawa, Ibn Abil Kawa, who was a Kharaji, a Kharijite, one day came to Amir al muminin alayhi salam and he said, I found a lot of contradictions in the Quran. Imam Ali salam Allah alayhi said, may your mother not, you know, have wept over your dead body. The, the Quran approves one part, approves the other part, confirms the other part, not contradicts. He says, for example, he gave one example, uh, he gave many examples, I'll give him one example, I'll give you one example here. He said, Allah in one part says, he is the Lord of the East and the West. In another part, he's the Lord of the two Easts and the two Wests. In another part, he says, he's the Lord of the many Easts and many Wests. So what is this? This is called contradiction. Either one East, one West, two East, two Wests, many East, one Wests. 
رب المشرق والمغرب أو رب المشرقين ورب المغربين أو رب المشارق ورب المغارب you know, which one it is he says يا ابن أبي العوجاء when Allah says the Lord of the East and the West for example that's East this is West okay for example this is that's that's one okay when he says two East two West the East of the winter is different from the East of the summer what he's referring is the angle of the sun the angle of the sun is different obviously you can tell that it's very obvious especially those of you who live in countries that have a huge difference in time for example in the winter time Maghrib for example is at 4 35 p.m and in the summer time Maghrib is at like 10 30 p.m approximately give or take so what a huge difference you know six hours that tells you the angle of the sun is different so what Allah is referring to there is that the two Easts and the two West the East of the summer and the East of the winter and the West of the summer and the West of the winter okay so you see subhanallah Rabbul Masharqi Wal Maghrib the Easts and the Wests he says every day the angle of the sun changes again those of you who live in countries with major uh, differences between sunrise and sunset during uh, winter and summer you see for example every day it changes by like one minute two minutes sunrise for example or sunset changes as you can see look at uh, the timetable and this is something that you can look up uh, you know from any website that tells you about sunset timing of sunset so you see every day it changes by like one minute two minutes so every day there is a different east from the previous day in the year so he says within the year and he told him within the year the 360 years or uh, days of the year for example every day it's a different sunrise and different sunset so you see subhanallah quran confirms each other but people and ibn abil kawa he was he spoke arabic he was eloquent in arabic but he did not understand subhanallah so it doesn't mean just because you speak arabic you can understand scholars ahlul bayti alayhim salam would identify would define for us so after these four people they gathered and they said what they said ibn abil awja abdul malik al basri abu shakir al disani abdullah al muqaffa imam al sadiq alayhi salam walks by them and recites this ayah from surah al isra bismillah rahman al rahim qul la in ijtama'at al insu this is ayah number 88 of surah al isra Say, if all ins, human and jinn, ala ayyatu, ijtama'at, unite, they all meet, they have a convention, all of jinn and all of the ins, with all their expertise, you bring, for example, experts in Arabic language, scholars in math, scholars in physics, chemistry, biology, etc., etc., all humanity, and the jinn, both of them, they all unite to come up with a copy like this Quran ala an ya'tu bimithli hadha al-Quran just like this Quran la ya'tuna bimithlihi walaw kana ba'dhuhum li ba'dhin zahira they won't be able to come up with anything like it even if they support one another each one supports the other they can't they cannot come up with a copy like the Quran so here you see subhanallah it was like a slap on their faces so brothers and sisters make sure that you take care of the Quran it is kalam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala read the Quran on a daily basis that's the fourth or that's uh, the third interpretation the first interpretation these are letters that we don't understand second is that um, they could be referring to the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the attributes of Allah each letter refers to an attribute of Allah the third meaning is like I said these are tools Allah is saying as the hadith of Imam al-Sajjad and Imam al-Rida alayhim as -salam, that use these tools try to come up with a copy of the Quran but you won't be able to do so okay so that's the third the fourth one these uh, could have relevance to the ayah itself for example when we take a look at surat Yusuf surat Yusuf also begin with alif lam ra Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says alif lam ra ذلك الكتاب uh, تلك آيات الكتاب المبين ألف لام را تلك آيات الكتاب المبين in سورة يوسف ألف لام را indeed these are the verses or the signs of this clear book okay in سورة 
Ibrahim, the one we're discussing, Alif Lam Ra, Kitabun Anzal Nahu Ilayka. Alif Lam Ra, a book that we have revealed down to you. Every surah that begins with Alif Lam Ra in the Quran, if you look at it, there are several surahs that begin with Alif Lam Ra. Each one of them, the verse continues to say a book or in reference to the Holy Quran. So that could be there is a relationship here. These letters have relationship with the theme of the ayah, with the theme of the surah, or with the Quran or some other theme. Okay, so that's another interpretation here. These are the four interpretations that we will discuss. Now, Kitabun Anzalnahu Ilayk, Alif Lamra, a book that we have revealed to you. Why? What is the purpose of this book? So that you take people out from darknesses to light. There are many paths of deviation, but there is Sarat al Mustaqim, one way that leads us to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why we read in Surah Al Fatiha, Ihdin al Sarat al Mustaqim, guide us to the straight path. So many paths of deviation, but one path of Hidayah. Hidayah. Indeed, Quran is a book of Hidayah. That's the essence of the Quran. It's to, gu to guide. Inna hadha al Qur'ana yahdi. Allah says this Quran surely guides. It's a book of Hidayah. Guides people. When people read the Quran and do tadabbur, there is tadabbur of Quran. Tadabbur. tadabbur means you read the ayat and you try to interact with the ayat, learn from the ayat, not interpret. There is tadabbur, there is tafsir, and there is ta'wil. Tadabbur means you read the ayat and you reflect upon them. Tafsir means that what is intended, the meaning intended by the ayat. This requires scholarship, requires education, requires someone to really know, well, be well versed in Arabic language, history, jurisprudence. So it requires some um, tools that one needs to do tafsir, not for anyone to come up and derive laws from the Quran like some people do these days especially. Pearson goes and studies Arabic for like six months, one year, and then all of a sudden he be thinks that he's a scholar of the Arabic language and starts deriving laws and speaking and, and so on and so forth. That is the job of the Mufassireen who have these tools and they need the hadith of Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam not up to them. So even in the Shi'i school of thought, you have the big Mufassireen, they do tafsir of the Quran, but at the same time, they refer to the ahadith of Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam to help them understand, guide them in their tafsir. They use the verses of the Quran to interpret the other verses of the Quran, but they don't stop from the ahadith of Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam. And then there is ta'wil, which is the hidden meaning of the Quran, the ta'wil, which is the deeper meaning. And that's only exposed or revealed to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the ma'sumin alayhim salam. As per ayah number seven of Surah Ali Imran, that no one knows ta'wilahu, it's, its deeper interpretation, but Allah wa rasikhuna fil ulm, and those who are well versed in knowledge. Okay, every day Imam Amir al Mu'mineen says, try to read a hundred verses of the Quran in Arabic. And I'm saying in Arabic, you know, don't read the translation in Arabic, read a hundred verses, and then say seven times, Ya Allahu, Ya Allahu, Ya Allah, seven times. And ask for your haja, Allah inshallah will fulfill your haja. Imam al Rabba alayhi salam says every day you should read at least 50 verses of the Quran. Now, if someone says, I can't, Shaykh, it's difficult for me, my Arabic is not that great, pick up a book with a transliteration. These days there are transliterations available. So read the transliteration and any hundred verses of the Quran. Just get used to reading the Quran. The translation you can read to help you do tadabbur, if you don't know Arabic. Tadabbur, that's the reflection, contemplate on the verses of the Quran so that you can learn. When you come across a verse that talks about, for example, the hellfire, you say, Ya Allah, save us from the hellfire. You come across a verses that tell you, for example, of Jannah, you say, Ya Allah, make us among the people of Jannah. For example, that's called contemplation. And you interact with the Quran. Allah says, establish salat. You say, Ya Allah, make me among the people who establish salat, for example and so on and so forth. So these are ways for us to interact with the Quran and make the Quran really a part of our lives. Every day we should be reading the Quran to the best of our abilities. Now, Allah says it's a book that guides people to tukhrij nas Now interestingly, the surah begins with this, a book we reveal to you so that you take people out from darknesses to light. 
by the permission of their Lord. In the last ayah of Surah Ibrahim, Allah says, هذا بلاغ للناس. This is a proclamation to people. Quite interesting, which means that the Quran and the laws of Allah are not only for Muslims, they're for humanity at large. The Quran is a book of guidance for those who want to gain guidance. All humanity, when they read the Quran, they will believe in its message, they will believe in the message of Rasulullah if they were to seek guidance. However, there is no compulsion in the religion. لا إكراها في الدين Allah does not force people. Otherwise, Allah also says in Surah Ali Imran, وَلِلَّهِ عَلَى النَّاسِ حِجُّ الْبَيْتِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mandated on people to perform hajj. Hajj. للناس. Allah not upset upon the mu'mineen or the muslimin. All people. That's why some of the fuqaha suggest that the ahkam of Allah, the ahkam of Islam are universal. They apply to all human beings. However, there is no compulsion in the religion. People choose to follow or not to follow. So that is, you see the cohesion of the Quran. It began, began Surah Ibrahim, a book we revealed it to you so that you take people out from darknesses to the light. And Allah says at the end, هذا بلاغ للناس. This is indeed a proclamation to the people. Okay, you take them out by the permission of your Lord. يعني Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, all the powers he has, all the abilities he has, comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is not independent of Allah wal billah. That's shirk. No one says that. But Allah has given him guidance, abilities. And we'll talk about that in the future, inshallah, later on in this, when we come to this, to the surah, about how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the Ma'asumeen alayhim salam abilities to cure people, to heal people, to perform miracles. We'll talk about that inshallah later. But by the permission of their Lord, to the Sirat al-Aziz al-Hamid, لتخرج الناس من الظلمات إلى النور. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us on the Sirat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sirat al-Mustaqeem, Sirat al-Aziz, Aziz, the all honorable, the mighty, powerful, and Hamid, the one who people need to be thankful to repeatedly no matter how much we thank Allah it's too little we don't do justice to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so brothers and sisters first of all increase your interaction with the Quran read the Quran on a daily basis try to contemplate on the words of the Quran try to read at least 50 verses even better 100 verses every day and then after you read these 100 verses say ya allah ya allah ya these 100 verses could be from anywhere in the quran let's say you read a short surah for example surah al naba has 40 verses for example um, you read other surahs with a bit more verses shorter verses and so on and so forth try to read the quran interact with it pray to allah to illuminate our hearts with the quran Look at the wordings of the Quran. Imam al-Sadiq was asked, if I memorize the Quran, should I read it by heart or look at the words? He says, no, look at the words, even if you have it memorized. Look at the words because it illuminates. This is Kalam Allah. These are the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They have some healing power. They have curing power. And indeed, when you listen to the Quran being recited professionally well, truly soothes people. I remember, Many years ago, I was invited to a church back in Vancouver, Canada. It was called Knox United Church. At that Knox United Church, I gave a talk. I started off by reciting a few verses through the style, Tajweed, of Surat Maryam. And then I translated the verses and gave a brief talk. At the end of my talk, people came to me and they said, we did not understand a word of the Arabic that you recited, but it was moving. We felt it moving, really. I mean, it vibrates the human being. And this was not the first time I've had this. Other times, I've also gone to places where I've recited and people who are not Muslims, they would come, people who don't understand Arabic, they say this, this reciting, uh, citation was mesmerizing, it was moving. Indeed, the words of Allah, Allah says, when they said this to me, I remembered the verse in Surah Al-Hashr where Allah says, if we were to reveal a the Quran upon a mountain, you'd see it shaking and trembling from 
the fear of Allah. So then what about a human being who has feelings and emotions and a mind and an intellect? So truly brothers and sisters, the Quran brings healing to the heart, cures to the heart. It soothes people. So pray to people, to Allah to make you among the people of the Quran. The best among you is the one who learns the Quran and teaches it to others. This is a book of guidance. Never doubt the Quran. It is Kalam Allah. I attended a lecture more than 20 years ago by a professor at UBC, the University of British Columbia in Vancouver, Canada. His name was Professor Hanna Qassis. He was a Christian man of Palestinian origin and he was a professor of Islam and Arabic language at UBC. I attended his lecture myself and he said in that lecture, if I were to treat the Quran as a book of literature, only book of literature, I can prove that it is the words of Allah, subhanAllah, subhanAllah. We say Alhamdulillah who made us among the believers of the Quran, the followers of the Quran. May Allah increase our guidance through the Quran and through Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam And indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa ala tells us that Ali is with the Quran and the Quran is with Ali. So really, Imam Ali alayhi salam is the teacher of the Quran. He is the guide to the Quran. Ahlul Bayt are the guides to the Quran. And on this night, Amirul Mu'mineen, Salamullahi Alayhi, is on his deathbed after being struck by the sword of Umar, uh, of Abdul Rahman ibn Muljam. And he is there, his family is all around him, they're in tears, crying. They're saying, Aywa Abata, Aywa Aliya. The news has spread across Kufa that Ali has been struck. So the orphans gathered at the door of Amir al Mu'mineen. People gathered at the door of Amir al Mu'mineen. Al Asbagh ibn Nubata says, I came to see Imam Ali. He was wearing a yellow turban. His face was so pale that it was as pale as the tur uh, it was as yellow as the turban he was wearing. Salamullahi alayhi. I told him, Ya Amir al Mu'mineen, show me your wound. He showed me his wound. I said, Ya Amir al Mu'mineen, you are like a mountain. Nothing hurts you. Nothing hurts you. Inshallah, you'll be cured from this one. You'll come back. He said, No, Ya Asbagh, I am going to be leaving you soon. So Asbagh started crying. Amir al Mu'mineen said, Ya Asbagh, don't cry. Innahal Jannah. Meaning, I'm going to Jannah, Ya Asbagh. He said, I, am, I know that, Ya Amir al Mu'mineen. But I am crying because I'm going to miss you. Abki li firaqika, Ya Amir al Mu'mineen. I'm going to be missing you, Ya Amir al Mu'mineen. Every day I used to come pray salat behind you. Today onwards, I'm going to be missing you. Then the family brings a doctor by the name of Athir, Athir ibn Amr. He takes a certain vein from a sheep and he inserts it into the wound of Amir al Mu'minin. Then he takes it back and he looks at it and he says, Ya Amir al Mu'minin, I'ahad ahadak, awsi wasiyatak, fa inna darbat hadha al-la'in wasalat ila ummi ra'sik. Oh, Ya Amir al Mu'minin. Give your wasiyya, give your will for the strike of this enemy of Allah has made it deep into your head, meaning the poison is now spread. <laughs> when the family heard this, they started crying, Aywa Aliya, Aywa Imama, Aywa Abata. And then Imam Ali was in the state, he was in pain. He told his, Imam, his son Imam Al Hassan, now, after they captured Abdul Rahman ibn Muljim and they kept him in, locked in a room in the house, he said, Take care of him, make sure you feed him, don't keep him, don't leave him, stay hungry. I say, Ya Amir al Mu'mineen, you are giving wasiyya, you are uh, telling people to take care of your murderer. What about us? We love you, Ya Amir al Mu'mineen. We are, inshallah, among your Shia, inshallah. Remember us in dunya, in the qabr, in the mahshar, Ya Amir al Mu'mineen. And then one day, while he was in the state, uh, Zainab alayhi salam came to see him. She said, Oh Father, I have a question to ask you. He said, Yes, my beloved Zainab, what would you like to ask? 
She said, I want to ask you about the hadith of Ummu Ayman. The Prophet had told Ummu Ayman about Karbala. Ummu Ayman narrated that hadith to Zainab Salamullahi Alayha. So she came to ask Amir al Mu'mineen. When he heard this, he cried. <laughs> He said, yes, Ya Zainab, but what she did not tell you is that you will be coming as a prisoner to Kufa. Aywa Imam, Aywa Ali, Inna Lillah. Wa inna ilayhi raji'oon, wa sayalamu alladheena zalamu, ayya munqalabin yanqalibun, wal aqibatu lil muttaqeen. Raise your hands in the dua, brothers and sisters. On these holy nights, as we are now commemorating the Shahada of Amir al Mu'mineen, and with these eyes that are full of tears, through which you have just commemorated Imam Ali, Imam, the Imam of Justice, the Imam of Mercy. We give our condolences to the Imam of our time. We raise our hands in dua. Many mu'mineen have asked us to remember them in our dua. Some mu'mineen are ill. Some have been, some have become ill with this COVID-19 and are in hospitals, on ventilators in fact. Some of them are. They're requesting our dua. Many people have hajat. We all have hajat. We all have needs. And I say our biggest need is that we would like to be, Ya Amir al mumineen among your Shia, us and our offspring until the day of judgment. We would like to be of your Shia and your sincere servants, inshallah. May Allah give us your shafa'a in dunya, in the qabr and in the akhirah. This is our biggest hope and biggest dua, inshallah. We become among the mu'mineen, the salihin. We attain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam Raise your hands. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. أَمَّنْ يُجِيبُ الْمُضْطَرَّ إِذَا دَعَاهُ وَيَكْشِفُ السُّوءُ 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 اللهم إنا نسألك ونادعوك باسمك العظيم الأعظم الأعز الأجل الأكرم ten times together يا الله Ya Allah, 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 Ya Allah. Ilahi bi Fatimata wa Abiha wa Ba'liha wa Baniha wa Sirr al-Mustawda' fiha. Ikshif anna su'a Ya Allah. O oh Allah, keep all harm away from humanity at large. Allahumma ighfir dhunubana, kaffir anna sayyatina, wa tawaffana ma'al abrar, ma'a Muhammadin wa alihi al-Adhar. O oh Allah. Fulfill all the needs of those mu'mineen who have hajat. All those who are ill, grant them a quick and complete recovery, Ya Allah. O oh Allah, have mercy on us and our progeny and our parents, Ya Allah. Rabbi ghfir li wa li walidayya wa lil mu'mineen yawma yaqoom al-hisab. Rabbi irhamhuma kama rabbayani saghira. Ijzihima bil ihsani ihsanan wa bil sayyati ghufrana. All those who requested our duas, O oh Allah, fulfill their needs. Keep all harms away from them. Cure those who are ill of them, Ya Allah. Grant them peace and security wherever they are, Ya Allah. O oh Allah, support the Muslims and unite them and unite their hearts together, Ya Allah. O oh Allah, hasten the reappearance of our Imam Al-Mahdi Al-Muntadar Ajalallah Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif. And make us among his sincere followers and companions, inshaAllah, and his Shia. And grant us the Shahada with him, Ya Allah. اللهم كل وليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا برحمتك يا رحم الراحمين لقضاء الحوائج وشفاء المرضى وكشف هذه الغم عن هذه الأمة ولتعجيل فرج مولانا صاحب العصر والزمان وإلى رواح أمواتنا وأمواتكم وأموات المؤمنين والمؤمنات والشهداء والعلماء رحم الله من يقرأ السورة المباركة الفاتحة مع الصلوات اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجهم جزاكم الله خيرا أيها المؤمنون Please keep us in your duas والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته